What's going on everybody? It's your boy Chris coming at you for another Duel and Bros video. It's a beautiful day outside today, so I thought I would do this video outside. Um, this is kind of, I guess some people will consider this a heavy video. I thought this was coming for a while. Um, but MetaZoo closed today. They made a big post about it, right? Um, the most asked question I've received since last January was why did Steven and I leave? Why did the Dueling Brothers leave? The partner program we were one of the first partners we were one of the most notorious youtube channels um and we were going very strong from what it seems like on the outside it's hard to know what is the view on the outside because i was on the inside and i can tell you what you're going to learn uh, from this video is that we really were struggling from day one just to figure out how we were going to keep things going uh, the partner program really, really handcuffed us, and uh, the fact that we were only doing MetaZoo, that we weren't some, that we weren't able to do other TCGs. Uh, I guess not able. We didn't really have any interest, also. Um, but that ended up crippling us a lot. So you know, Stephen and I really wanted to make the Dueling Brothers work uh, for. Uh, the business-wise, at least. The YouTube videos are going to keep coming for Lorcana. But uh, that MetaZoo, like the business for the MetaZoo, we really wanted that to work. Um, I, I, I personally had a 40-hour-a-week job and then also was doing that at night. And I worked early mornings. I'd get off and I would like go meet Steven. I might have an hour, an hour nap, not even like eat lunch and then do streams with him or do packing with him or I'd go home and I would do videos and I was just going nonstop nonstop okay uh, just to tell you guys how committed I was um, I, I crashed my car I fell asleep and I crashed my car because of lack of sleep there was just it was a big week um, I think it was the week of seance release to be honest um, we had like three or four events, videos to do. I think I was maybe getting an hour or two of sleep at night. And uh, we really had to do a lot of work uh, because of something that happened that I will get to later in the video that uh, was really a catalyst that pushed everything over the edge for us. Uh, but yeah, so if, if any of you question like, like our dedication to really wanting to like bring MetaZoo like to the forefront and have it be successful you know I, cr I literally crashed my car from trying to make our business successful and you know and Steven also put in just as much effort as me you know it's you know he was just fortunate enough to not wind up in that scenario okay um here we go all right let's get into it why we left the partner program. I, I have printed some notes uh, so they don't just ramble on forever and uh, go off topic. Thanks, airplane. Uh, the, I guess the problems of doing it outside, of doing the video outside, right? Um, stuff didn't come on time. All right. I, how in the world are you gonna have a partner program? And part of the advertising is you're gonna get stuff two weeks in advance. So that you can have pre-release stuff, and you know, and and you guys will be the first ones to get it. And then I think there was only one set that did that people that weren't partners didn't get the stuff before we did. I, I think we were partners for three or four sets. Well, they didn't have that many sets, so I think it was only three sets. Yeah, because you know they didn't do a main set at all this year, and they call the Hello Kitty one a main set. Get out of here with that, okay? I'm not. We're not here to talk about that it's stupid shit. But, um, and then on top of that, the kits, all these kits, streamer kits, uh, kit this, kit that, you know, partner kits. We got one kit, okay? And it was lousy. I'm just going to be flat out. It was lousy compared to what they advertised, like stamped, uh, stamped hollow cards and, you know, like partner, partner promos and whatnot. What we got was lousy. And, um, honestly, like our tournaments were just fine without that lousy crap that they said. I mean, the mats were okay, I guess. I liked I liked one of the mats, but um, it was just, 
it, compared to, to what we were promised to what we got is very disappointing uh, you know I was never gonna complain about free stuff while the while it was going on right uh, but man you know when you're made promises and you just don't follow through it's 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 very very uh, disheartening uh, so those two things really started us off of a bad a bad start that was a bad start okay so then um, the prices the prices are way too high what, how, how, we, how are we supposed to sell stuff when you know other TCGs don't have anything near that near that um, um, near that price better quality cards you know or they're, they're more established they get more packs whatever it may be okay the prices were too high okay when the consumer is coming to you and saying the prices are too high we had 90% of our customers say we are buying from you because we support you and you guys are awesome we love your videos but the prices are really high okay can you can you can you talk to Mike can you talk to Medici can you figure it out we would always say we're gonna do our best you know all we can do is provide feedback okay guess what we couldn't really provide feedback if we didn't want to get banned. We all know the notorious MetaZoo way of say any criticism, get banned. And since our whole business was MetaZoo, we weren't going to be the first ones to complain. But everybody everybody did end up complaining. But uh, but man, very quick, of course, did uh, did talks come in the partner in the partner chat from. Uh, from the top brass of you know hey you want this band hammer be quiet okay no complaints is essentially what was what it felt like it's not what was said but is what it it's what it felt like being a partner um we'd have to pay for things way way and for all and for all that all that being said we have to pay for everything way in advance so we pay for everything super far in advance not show up on time no notice until like the day of hey sorry we're not going to ship it till tomorrow or it's going out right now what we're already supposed to have it and uh and, and then the prices were way too high so like what is what is going on here okay um you know these are just mini handcuffs that they put on us um and then on top of that it uh it really felt like there was favoritism towards the bigger partners um steven and i would have really liked to have seen um maybe some lesser known partners get featured in the announcements uh or get you know streaming stuff it didn't necessarily have to be us we would have loved for it to be us okay but um you know it's just and we talked to other other partners i'm not going to bring anybody i'm not going to bring anybody else into this but you know um it's it, it was really disheartening being someone who only did MetaZoo as a very small business to never get any type of shout out on the announcement page of doing brothers are doing a stream tonight go by you know blah 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 no it was always the biggest streamers they had available and uh just very disheartening for a small business so um you know I wish everybody successful I wish I hope everybody's successful uh, you know, and I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad or anything like that. I'm just saying as someone who was owning a small business, uh, it would, it would have just been really nice to, uh, be shouted out on the, uh, discord or something like that just for a stream, you know, just anything, uh, just to get any type of recognition. Um, and then probably the big thing that, uh, just made us go, we're done. We're done with this. Let's break ties. Was in Seance, we made uh, tokens, okay? So that's what we were known for, right? We have tokens, and that was our thing. So they said they were going to make the NFT cards, right? It took them forever to even announce that they were going into, going into production. So what is the purchase of owning it, of buying the NFT if you don't own that image? I'm just going to look at it on my phone. So what we did was we had a couple of original token ideas, I believe. In, it was the second set, right? Yeah, it was the second set. The second set of tokens for the Dwayne Brothers was three original artworks. But then we had, what was it? It was either three or four secret rares that 
we didn't tell anybody about. No, no, no. It was one. It was two secret rares, and then there was two bundles. That's what it was. There was two NFT token secret rares in the packs, uh, and then uh, there was uh, the bundle tokens that we were giving away. Okay. So, um, we advertise everywhere. Everywhere. Nobody says anything. Um, we're not hiding the fact that we are doing these tokens, okay? And then after we've already sent out a bunch of stuff, we're going to get a message from Andy. It's a very rude message, okay? Essentially, uh, being like, uh, we didn't have permission to do this, and we don't own any NFT imaging or whatever, which really makes me question why even why even buy the damn NFT? It's already like a scam. Um, I at least whatever. Uh, and uh, it seemed like there was about uh, going to be threat of banning and legal action potentially uh, towards us for giving away a free product. Let me and let me remind you guys: these tokens were free, okay, with the bundles. I weren't we weren't selling them or anything like that. Not to mention, they looked better than what ended up coming out, to be honest. I, we, yeah, our tokens were way better than what they eventually came out with as NFTs. I think that's really what it was. But, um, so we ended up having to uh, message, like, a few people. The few people who did pull a couple and be like, hey, listen, please don't post about it. We weren't supposed to, apparently, you know, we don't want to get in trouble, and uh, we had to do damage control. So then Steven and I, and two friends, or three friends, uh, shout out to Anish and uh, our silent partner, and I think I think maybe one more person came in. But we had uh, somewhere around 300 Dueling Brothers token packs we had to disassemble. And put back together. Here's the thing. That's like they were paper packs. <laughs> so the packs got destroyed. We had to destroy packs. And then we had to double print them and then remake packs you know, in like a day because we had to we had to get these shipments out. It was it was a mess. And we found this all out while we were in Denver. Also, when Metasu is selling Seance before it's out. It is wild, okay? MetaZoo taking sales away from their own partners is ridiculous, okay? That's a whole nother rabbit rabbit hole. Um, but anyway, so after the whole token sh shebang, we break ties. Pff, done, okay? Um, and, um, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we were quick partners. We sold everything for dirt cheap and said bye, Felicia. So, I decided I was going to I tried to join a team, and I was going to continue doing videos because I like playing the game. I ended up being on Legion of Doom, and uh, we had uh, a lot of good success at the Towers. Lo and behold, it is extremely hard to get MetaZoo to pay you. Who would have thought? In fact, Dark Tower people, I apologize. You still haven't been paid. I would lawyer up if I were you. Just go ahead and do that. Just lawyer up because, uh, you know... It's a lot of money to promise people to travel out to. That was an expensive tournament to get to. So um, that was the reason why I didn't go. I didn't think we were going to get paid. And I thought the company was going to collapse before then. So here we are. Um, but I continued making videos. The locals, people just kept dwindling down and wanting to play Lorcana. Dwindling down and wanting to play Lorcana. But that's really why I switched over to Lorcana. Had people tell me it would have to be fun. Guess what? It's way funner than MetaZoo, I think. Even though I did enjoy playing MetaZoo. Um, why did I stop making videos? Okay, because I was still making videos. Why did I stop making videos, Chris? Because you, you, like, abandoned, like, not that long after that. And you were a podcast, blah, 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 locals every week, this, that, this, that, this, that. And out of nowhere, it was like, kaplooey. Here we go. Let's get into that right now. I began to see more and more promo sets as the days went on. That doesn't sit right with me, Okay. Promo sets that you pay for well in advance, so far in advance that you can't get a return on your re uh, a refund from your bank because you don't get it until like 150 days later, right? Um, and it's just promo set after promo set, and then on top of that, every promo set has an OP card, so you have to buy it. 
one big scam, okay? Just a money grab. Everything they did was money grab. They took the TCG hype and just tried to profit the most out of it and tried to gaslight everybody into thinking that they were good people, okay? This is not the case. I'm talking about the head of the company, okay? There's a lot of people that work for that company that are probably perfectly pleasant people, but the people who run that company, they knew what they were doing, okay? Well, let's move on. Uh, I already covered it. it. took months to get paid for the towers and whatnot. Uh, this the new CEO Andy what a rude person okay I've never seen somebody gaslight his community so much in my entire life okay like you want to victim blame and do all this other stuff but, oh poor me I'm sure people hate me but you know I'm gonna do this anyway bro shut up okay like no one cares just run the company in a good way and stop being so rude. I'm, I mean, I'm surprised it took you this long to bankrupt this company with how you acted. You were such a rude individual. Like, I can, I don't even know how you got promoted. And I hope that you put this on your resume and uh, that people find this video and they see how rude you are. Because, I mean, okay. And then I stopped making videos because when they canceled CC, all I did was say something to the effect of, why, what, what do you say to the people who booked their flights way in advance? Because to any person who is serious about playing in every tower and playing in CC and being a professional MetaZoo player looked all the time at that damn sheet that they had and it's at Caster Cup at New York Comic Con for over a year, okay? So don't tell me it wasn't planned, okay? It was planned. And then the idiots that wanted to come up behind him and be like, oh yeah, you know, you didn't have to buy it way in advance. Oh, I'm sorry for being an adult and buying my plane ticket in advance. And so now I've lost money because you decided to cancel an event because you don't know how to run a company and pay people. You know, it's, it is, it is wild. Why would you even have these tournaments that you can't afford? So, I don't know. It feels like fraud to me, but you know what? You go get a lawyer, everybody who hasn't been paid, and you figure it out, all right? Um, so, the Hello Kitty set was a big, was a huge, huge red flag, and then when he gaslit me in the Discord, uh, I was done. I was like, you know what? I'm done with this. Uh, you know, I've had so many bad interactions with the top two people in MetaZoo. Uh, you know, I mean, Mike has had to do, you know, has come back and apologized for him a couple of times to me in a sense. But, you know, um, I'm done. I'm not, I like, I was like, I'm not dealing with this anymore. So, uh, that's essentially, that's essentially everything. And then at, after that, I just quit making any type of MetaZoo video. And it was only Lord Connor. And Lord Connor is where I'm going to keep going. Got Steven into it. We're having a blast. And um, honestly, like it's been fun, and uh, the people playing are nice people. I've met a lot of nice people in, in while I was playing MetaZoo, but I also met a lot of toxic people. Okay, and uh, you know, I'm not gonna say that I haven't had um, an emotional day or two, right? But uh, but you know, overall, it, it, it's just not like that in Lorcana. Now, can we can can we maybe? Uh, I know specifically for me, when I would get emotional, there would be money on the line or something like that. So uh, it's kind of understandable, right? When a lot of money's on the line, emotions get get a little wild. So, um, you know, I think maybe the little bit of the toxicity in the community was from that. So with, with high stakes, you know, high rewards, high risk, you know, there's a lot of stress. Emotions are flying. Um, but either way, I'm having I'm having a lot of fun now playing Lorcana. Steven's having a lot of fun playing Lorcana. He was done with TCGs completely, and I was able to pull him back in. Okay, we're having a lot of fun, and um, if you you know you watch this all the way through, uh, I hope if you were one of those people that just defended MetaZoo blindly, um, I hope going forward uh, you do more research and uh, you know you pay attention to to what's going on and uh it's i i feel like the writing was on the wall for a long time but i feel like a lot of people were just blindly uh just following and just buying and wasting their own money and i really do feel sorry for them so the conclusion of this was metazoo a scam absolutely they operated like a kickstarter from day one and never ended it. Have a good day.